Yo guys, what is going on? Blossom is back. Welcome back to the final part of overrated or overpowered EGT edition. Yes, as always, nine cars per episode. This is the third part, so we'll be covering the final of the 27 cars. Now, to give you guys a nice little recap on part one and part two, I'm gonna show you this thing right here. I'll also turn on my camera, as I always do for the series. All right, guys, so if you haven't already, do you check out part one and part two. These are the cars I've already gone through, and the ones with the nice little green underline are the ones that stood out to me the most. So. Some standouts from part one included the Audi Q455, the Renault Clio Williams, the Peugeot Rifter 4.4, which I finally unpack and I have been using in clubs, the McLaren 765LT, and of course, the bobsled. And in part two, cards that stood out to me included the Audi Q4, the Peugeot Fractal, the Peugeot Asphalt, and the McLaren Speedtail. Honestly, the Alpha Sportsit seemed okay as well. The only issue is that, you know, it's an RQ30 and not a 39, so obviously I'm only be using that for a bargain. Anyway, let's move on to part three and what are the final nine cars that we're gonna be looking at today. All right, everybody, so let's get into it. As always, thank you so much. This is one of the most popular series on the channel. You guys love it. You guys enjoy it. It takes me a long time to make it, but it's all worth it if you guys like it. So as always, guys, if you enjoy the series, feel free to comment down below what you like about the cars that we're featuring today. So the first car that we're going to talk about is the KTM Expo GT XR. Now, this was also requested by someone, can you do the KTM Expo? And I actually replied with this. I agree, the KTM was actually supposed to be in part two, but I replaced it with the speed tail last minute because I wanted it to end with a, with a bang. And, and, and I like to do that with all these episodes. I like to end with a bang. So the KTM was actually consider, considered for part two, but I moved it down to part three. Uh, so let's see what I think about this car because I do think it's quite interesting. It's like the uh, uh, the uh, EGT version of Hollywood, right? There were, you know, If you don't know what Hollywood is, then you're probably new to the channel, but it's the Viper ACR. So, 85, how good is it? Well, it's the best car in car park, karting circuit, twisty circuit, and twisty road. Now, again, I am comparing it within rear-wheel drive, low-ground clearance cars, handling-centric cars, within that RQ range of 86, 84, and 85. And it stands out, you know, it hits above its weight against some cars, like the Alpha TZ3 Corsa, for example, and it's able to trade blows with the Porsche 911 GT3 RS, both of which are the front runners in that 85 category. It also trades some blows with the 84 Radical SR3, but I do think that the Radical being like the best car for G-Force, Indoor Karting, and Slalom is more of a situation of the Radical being, you know, better. <laughs> than, than an 84, like it's it's one of the better 84s, then the 85s being weaker than they actually are. Uh, also, it does beat my beloved Dodge Vapor ACR basically everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a good start for the KTM. Uh, moving on to the drags, though, it's not that good. So, just know where you want to play the KTM. It's more of a twisty specialist than a drag specialist. When you put it in the drag, the Pagani John, uh, Zonda Chinke Roadster is going to take the quake within this small comparison. So overall, I would say it's a competitive RQ85. It's like the Austrian GT3 RS, if you will. Uh, and yeah, within the comparison, this looks like a pretty twisty car. I didn't put it against some super specialists. Uh, but then again, within those hybrid kind of cars, it, it is pretty good. Uh, I would put it slightly above average. KTM Expo GTXR isn't that bad. Bad. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, moving on, this was highly requested uh, by Terrari069, the Alpha Stelvio 2.2 Turbo Diesel. Now, this one, I've been holding back on reviewing all surface tire cars. You did not see it in part one and part two, but I'm putting it in part three. You will see why in a bit, but a lot of people wanted to see this, and I wanted to see this myself as well. I've not unpacked this car before, but it looks pretty good. So let's see how well it performs. Well, over here, as you can see, pretty damn good in the dirt. I mean, against, you know, some all surface tire high ground clearance cars, it's able to beat, you know, most of the l -trayers. It trades blows with the Audi Q7 V12, which, does impress me a lot, quite a bit, actually, this uh, this Audi. Everyone talks about the Alpha Stelvio 2.2, but no one actually talks about the Audi Q7, probably because it's an Audi, uh, but we'll talk about that car later as well. It's also beating cars like the Volvos, the Skodas, the Cadillacs, you know, the Cadillacs, the Pontiac, uh, Torrent GXP, and the Infiniti FX35, they handle really well. They're, they're like 84 and 85 handling each, uh, and I think the Alpha Stelvio is also AC4 handling, so I wanted to see uh, if those American SUVs would give it a run for its money. Uh, the Pontiac, you know, the, uh, the, the, the well, no, not the Cadillac, but the Pontiac, used to be an RQ64 uh, way back when, and now it's an RQ60 and the, the Alpha's new standard. It's also uh, capable of beating the 65 Infiniti EX35, which came in JPT. So that's how it performs in the dirt, dirt wet. 
The Stelvio still takes the cake in many scenarios, right across small circuit, slalom, and the G-Force. Though, when you move it to sand, snow, and gravel, this is why <laughs> this is why I didn't want to do all surface tire comparisons in the first part because they just didn't have any times and they still don't. So here we are over a month into this update and we still don't know the times <laughs> in the sand, in the snow, in the gravel for this Alpha. So times are a little bit limited on this car. Now let's talk about other niches aside from just high ground clearance all surface tire ultra rares. Let's talk about Italian all surface. There are not a lot of Italian all surface tire cars. You're seeing everything basically from super rare down to, uh, from, uh, uh, from legendary down to super rare. And I mean, as you can see, the gradient kind of makes sense. You know, the Alpha uh, 64 is where it kind of should be. It, it does beat that 70 Maserati Levante in some places. So take a look at this, right? The Stelvio beats the Levante on G-Force. It beats it on Slalom. And, uh, okay, just 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 those two scenarios. But still, you know, it's kind of impressive considering that there's 4RQ separating the two cars. Uh, but I just wanted to showcase to you how, you know, there's a very small sample size of all surface high Italian cars. So I couldn't really compare the Alpha against just ultra rares within this Italian niche because then it would only be up against the 58 Maserati Levante diesel. So I decided to just throw everything in together. Then with the Italian all surface uh, for the dirt and wet, again, uh, I would say that the Stelvio managing to trade some blows with the, the Maserati Levante S, which is kind of impressive on GeForce wet, slalom wet, and this time even the motocross and even mountain hairpin, which I think is very, very impressive. Uh, it's, it's either the Maserati Levante being a really bad epic or the Alpha actually being a pretty, you know, pretty decent ultra rare, I would say. Uh, and then overall, the last news I want to showcase to you guys is just Alfa Romeo off-road. This is mainly for club purpose. So like, you know, if it's Alfa Romeo times five in clubs and it's like road less taken, as you can see, the Stelvio actually trades blows with the off-road. And that's a kind of a big deal, right? With an off-road tire, uh, Alfa Romeo. You, you kind of just need to memorize where the Stelvio kind of excels in. So it beats the Alfetta GT on Twisty, on the Rallycross, Motocross, obviously, Monaco Hairpin, Mountain Hairpin, Twisty Road and uh, Motocross. Again, uh, oh, Motocross Dirt and Motocross Dirt Wet. So you kind of just need to memorize where the Alpha Stelvio is better apply it in this in in those situations and it will bring you a lot of value in like an alpha five times in clubs uh if you want to beat the alfetta and the rq limit isn't too high overall i would say yeah it's a pretty decent car it has different strengths and different niches uh, and you know refer above to all those photos um and it's gonna be great for alpha clubs unfortunately we don't know how well it performs in the sand uh in the ice and in the snow because the times for that you know one month into the update still isn't there you know like i would love to upload these videos on lot sooner than I do, but I need those times. I need those times to judge the cars. So yes, this is under a limited comparison, but I do think it's a pretty good car. Uh, moving on now is the Audi Q7, because when I was doing my research on the Stelvio, I stumbled upon on how good the Audi Q7 actually is. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that I actually looked at the Stelvio, because if I didn't look at the Stelvio, I, this thing would have flown under my radar, honestly. The V12 TDI. Well, first of all, <laughs> it's, it's the best ultra rear for the hairpin dirt for, well the best ultra rear hairpin dirt by these uh categories so rq1065 b <laughs> okay not b because they're, they're a's in here as well all surface and four wheel drive okay so for a hairpin all surface four wheel drive the audi is the best ultra rear uh and, and and it beats all of the 65 epics on top drives records besides one so it's 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 only behind the volvo ex90 twin motor same thing for ocean beach slalom in the asphalt sand and wet it's the best ultra rear. again beating many epics and only losing to the volvo ex90 and the ford f-150 lightning so very impressive because uh at the start of american overdrive uh we realized that the cadillac escalate iq was the new best ocean beach slalom car for ultra air and below that's changed now with the audi q7 b12 it's also really good in these track sets uh so this is i took away the epics now so it's just 10 to 64 b all surface and four wheel drive it is among the best if not the best for monaco hairpin hairpin road dirt Ocean Beach Slalom, wet, and just the dry version. It's the best for Rallycross medium circuit asphalt dirt and Rallycross small circuit asphalt dirt. There's no time for the wet variants, but it is really impressive that this Audi, you know, is, is taking names against some really big players like the Alpha Stelvio, which we just looked at, the Kodiak, as well as the Holden HSV Avalanche. But I gotta say though, I mean, for now, it's the best car for uh, this track set, but then again, there are not a lot of times on that. So it's really impressive. Again, I'm putting it up against an now Audi all surface in the drag, 
Jag and the Audi <laughs> Q7, still really good. Um, beating, you know, a lot of its competitors. There are not a lot of times with this EGT cars, though, unfortunately, but it, it looks like it's going to be the best. And it's even capable of beating the Epics as well. It's uh, it's the same scenario here. So again, against Audi all uh, all surface in the drag and other conditions in ice, sand, and snow. Uh, the Q7 has a pretty decent showing. We don't know what the times are for the sand and ice. There's no times for that, unfortunately. Uh, but I do have a pretty strong feeling that it will be the best car here. Uh, and then when it comes to like dirt non-drag situations against just Audis, again very impressive. It beats you know the Altrairs as you expect. It loses on the slalom and. G-Force. Again, that is expected because the Q7 V12 is ridiculously heavy. It doesn't handle very well as well. But again, you know, it, it, it does surprise. It, it beats like the 65 Q850 on the hairpin and it, and it beats it on the rally crosses and the Monaco hairpin. So uh, I, I would say that this is actually a pretty good car. I wouldn't mind unpacking this one at all. Its strengths include hybrid off-road tracks among its niche. You know, obviously don't compare this to like off-road tire cars, but against like some SUV high ground clearance all surface tire cars this thing brings some value again it's under a limited comparison because there aren't times on top drives records for this car on like ice and sand and all that kind of stuff but from what we can see and from what i have seen this q7 is pretty damn impressive and honestly what makes it stand out is how it's the best ultra air for the uh, ocean beach slalom because the ocean beach slalom is special in a sense where it will beat off-road tire cars. Off-road tire cars, they don't, they don't, they don't fare well in Ocean Beach Slalom wet. Um, and the Q7 does, you know, all surface tire cars do. So being the best of that niche is a standout. I think that this is actually a pretty good car, in my opinion. Moving on, the Riddle Sport Clio Williams 16V is up next. Okay, so this medium ground clearance handles really well. Let's see how well it performs among the rares. Not well. <laughs> Against rare, medium, front-wheel drive cars, thing wins nothing. Uh, moving on, though, rare, medium, French. Again, it trades blows with the Peugeot 106. Yes, but the moment I bring in the Citroen Visa, it wins. Uh, I mean, it doesn't win anything. I mean, the, the, Citroen, the Citroen Visa will win almost everything, right? Only City Street Small, where it ties with the cheaper uh, Peugeot 106 GTI and a twisty circuit, I believe. And then everything else where it kind of excels in the fast circuit and all that kind of stuff is Alpine territory. The moment you put in an Alpine, the, the Renault is gonna be useless, right? Uh, same situation over here, I'm putting up against EGT Rare. Um, it's only the best car for car park. It's joint best on City Street Small. It's actually joint best on car park with the 36 Punto as well. The Punto is low, I get it, but still. Uh, fast circuit, again, loses the Punto. And honestly, the Renault, you can't really compare it against like other Renaults because then it'll be compared against like I've, I've already done it. I, I know there's no photo over here, but if you compare this against other rare Renaults, it'll go up against like the um, uh, the Alpines, for example. I, I guess the only thing that this thing might be very useful for if is if is if it's a Renault times five in clubs, you can only use a rare and it's like city streets, like city living. Like that's the only time. If you need a rare medium ground clearance Renault then this car will be useful. That's that's its niche. That's the only thing. It's other strengths. I mean, I guess it, it shares some wins with an RQ38. That's not saying much, though. Then just use the RQ38. It's cheaper, right? Um, I think that this car is slightly under average. I think it's a pretty weak 39, especially when you look at the general comparison against all the RQ39 medium ground clearance front-wheel drive cars. This thing is nothing special. Uh, now, moving on. Oh, big one. Peugeot L500R, requested by Vexuk607, I guess. Please rate the legendary Peugeot... Uh, L500. As you can see over here, between the uh, no, between the legendary and Peugeot, this part is edited because he actually wanted two cars. He wanted me to rate the Peugeot and also a legendary Audi. <laughs> I'm not doing the Audi, bro. It's trash. Uh, but yeah, I will do the L500R because this looks really good. So let's talk about it against four-wheel drive, low ground clearance, non-prize legends in the twisty scenario yeah it's damn good bro <laughs> it's damn good lose on the fast circuit the remax that's fine in the twisty stuff it really shines right now i'm going to compare it against french legendaries it trades blows with the peugeot 905 spider which many consider to be the best legendary that you can unpack in this update trades blows with that uh and also it beats things like the bugatti chiron the veyron the, the peugeot onyx all that kind of stuff uh obviously you know this is more more of the twisty scenario stuff when you put it in the drag not as much now i'm putting it up against a non price slicks plus regera plus the regera because because you know the regera is going to be fantastic on the fast circuit so um the the peugeot l500r again impressive 
you know, it beats many things, to be fair. It beats, like, the Porsche 935, beats the Pagani Zonda R, beats the Radical SR8, beats the Porsche 911 RSR, which are all really good legendaries. But with that being said and done, it still isn't better than, you know, the Club Sport 25 and the Radical SR10. Take, bring those two cars in, and they're kind of just going to, they're, they're going to dominate the playing field, basically, right? So the Radical's going to take the Super Twisty, and the Porsche is going to take kind of, like, the, the, the Twisty, but not so Twisty, like, you know, your Twisty Road circuits, all that kind of stuff, but also not really considered to be hybrid. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the, the Peugeot L500R, it's it's good, but in a general sense, I just want to show you that they're better options still, like the Porsche, like the Radical. Um, but overall, it's good. And one thing I do need to say is that the uh, the Peugeot L500R is the best non-prize uh hairpin car in the game uh so basically like it beats everything it beats the, the hyundai it beats the the 25 it beats uh the 935 the spider 962 zonda etc etc in terms of non-prize legendaries this is the best car for the hairpin in the entire game and that's really impressive overall i think this is a really impressive car i honestly do not think that this has an inflated rq because it's four wheel drive um it is up there training blows with a a lot of 98s and i think it deserves that rq so i don't think it's inflated with that four wheel drive drivetrain i think it's actually rightly rated i think it's really good i mean the fact that it's the best hairpin road you know non-prized legend in the game that's saying something that is genuinely saying something now next up is a renault kangaroo <laughs> i can't i can't take that name seriously <laughs> kangaroo boy uh let's talk about this okay so it's why I want to bring it up is because it's actually able to trade uh, blows with the Mitsubishi Pajero Field Guard. It's it's kind of like the the Peugeot L500 uh, in in a sense where it's <laughs> I know that's a ridiculous comparison, but in a sense that you know it's actually just really good on the hairpin road. Uh, so in the dirt, it actually beats the uh, Pajero Field Guard, which is kind of impressive. It also beats the Field Guard in the Rallycross Small, Rallycross Medium, Monaco hairpin. So that's actually pretty impressive in terms of like just uncommon all surface tire cars that. Kangoo is pretty strong, so much to the point where I actually want to compare it against the uh, Mitsubishi Pajero Field Guard that has four-wheel drive and off-road tires. Uh, when it comes to dirt wet, it remains the best for the Rally Cross and the Monaco Hairpin, um, and it remains the best all-surface tire options. So if I took away the Pajero, uh, the Kangoo will actually beat things like the Land Rover Discovery 2, the Frontera, and of course the Nissan Patrols, uh, which is really impressive to be honest. When it comes to gravel, the Kangoo is the best. Uh, ice, not so, uh, and then obviously when it comes to the sand and the snow, uh, the Mitsubishi is, is going to take the cake. But if you take the Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi away, as you can see, the cat crew is like the second best option. Or is it? Um, the problem is, right, you know, <laughs> the AutoZam exists. So it's it's standard tires, I get it. But the problem is, wherever the Kangoo beats the Pajero, the AutoZam beats the Kangoo. So in the end, the winners of all the dirt tracks that still belong to the AutoZam and the Pajero and the Kangoo just goes home and cries. But, you know, within that all-surface tire niche alone, if you, if you don't bring in, you know, the AutoZam and its standard tires, um, it is actually very strong. It is the best uncommon all-surface tire car in twisty dirt scenarios and gravel. It's actually just really good in gravel in general. It beats everything in gravel, right? Um, it's very lightweight and it's actually surprisingly pretty decent. So I would say... It's average because <laughs> at the end of the day, you're not going to be using it too much. If you if you want to use, you know, a dirt car um, and you're not restricted to all surface, which is a pretty weak niche, you would just either use the AutoZam or the Pajero. But if you are in a gravel situation, this is going to be great. I think it's average. I think it deserves to be a 28. I don't think it should go up in RQ. I don't think it should go down. Uh, moving on, Peugeot 207 R Cup. I think a lot of people wanted this too, but I just couldn't find any comments, surprisingly. Uh, let's get in straight into it. Four-wheel drive, low ultras. I mean, this thing shines, right? Uh, only a loser on the slalom to the Cadillac era, and that's because the Cadillac era weighs like, uh, like it weighs Lizzo. Basically, I think Lizzo is actually heavier than the Cadillac era. Um, but yeah, besides that, the Peugeot 207 R Cup, fantastic, right? Fantastic. Uh, winning all those twisty ones. I, I love seeing cars as dominant as this, honestly. Um, four drive low ultra in the drag, trade some blows with the Hyundai Clicks, right? Loses on one mile, zero to 120, hill climb, Tokyo drag, but is the best for quarter mile, half mile, and zero to 100. Within the cars in this comparison, and of course, uh, moving on, uh, Ultra Air French, unfortunately, it will always be second fiddle, at least second fiddle, to the uh, Peugeot 306 Maxi. Uh, the Peugeot 306 Maxi is going to beat it in the French category, in the French niche. It will also beat it in the Peugeot niche because they're from the same 
brand, right? Uh, EGT performance and slick tires though, obviously the Peugeot is gonna be useful here, beating things like the Alpha 8C Spider and just being the overall best option for your twisty EGT ultra asphalt needs yeah so yeah it's a good one it's a good one uh, i don't think it's gonna be blossom choice uh it will never be blossom choice in my opinion as long as it is cock blocked by the maxi but it's still very very strong it's a great four-wheel drive ultra uh low twisty and a great egt ultra low twisty as well two more cars to go over in the series guys the audi q3 sportback is next uh front wheel drive all surface and it has 82 handling when you fully upgrade it this thing is pretty damn strong i would say within its niche of rear wheel drive or front wheel drive all surface tire rare cars it's the front runner for g-force twisty road slalom motocross and airplane slalom it loses the hybrid stuff to to the Q345s, as you can see, those two are basically the same. But when you move it on to the dirt wet, again, it wins in the twisty, the slalom, the G-force, motocross, gravel, wins everything, uh, ice and snow, wins everything as well. There are no times for the Q345, but I will assume it is the same exact times as the other 39 Q345 TFSI. E. It's just that one's a sport back and one isn't. But overall, in terms of this niche, roll drive, front wheel drive, all surface rare. The Audi Q3 Sportback F3 is a really, really strong car to get. Uh, but again, if I'm comparing it up against front wheel drive off road all surface tire rear, then the Audi kind of loses that that um, that potency, I guess, because it will lose to the Citroen SM Rally. Now, why am I doing this comparison? Because it's very um, common in clubs where you will see front wheel drive five times. Uh, and and it's not that common that they will limit it to front wheel drive all surface tires only It will just be front wheel drive, which means that you can use an off-roader So it is kind of important if the Audi could trade blows with the Citroen But unfortunately it doesn't the Citroen is still the better car So the Audi is great within that front wheel drive all surface tire niche But outside of that it doesn't win much right and you know what can you say? I mean that that niche that front wheel drive all surface tire niche is not really the strongest category in the game is not something that you will see very often i think it might get you some value in clubs but that's going to be about it like it's going to be a very you know niche uh it, it will take a very small circumstance for this card to be very useful i would say that being said though within that niche it is great it is fantastic for twisty tracks on dirt on sand on snow on gravel on ice you name it it's pretty good so i would say it's above average i would say i i, I, I think it's above average i don't think it's good mainly because you know the niche that it serves is kind of useless um but it is an above average car in my opinion anyway last one is the peugeot 905 spider this is the the, the quote-unquote best packable car from the update right so let's see how good it actually is well in a general sense rear wheel drive performance slick plus the l500r as we saw earlier not that good um I, right now it shows you that it's the best in the fast circuit but that's also because i've blurred out the koenigsegg gear final i think it's relatively impressive that it does beat the hennessy venom gt uh, on fast circuit and fast circuit rolling but the moment you bring in the agera which is 4rq cheaper than the peugeot uh then you know this will not be the best fast circuit car anymore the, the agera is the better version and the regera as well is better so both the agera and the regera will beat the uh the peugeot spider on the fast circuit and in the more twisty scenarios which is where you would see these cars kind of operate besides the 962 i guess um it doesn't win any right it still loses to the 911 it even loses to you know the, the peugeot l500 loses to the radical sr10 etc etc uh now let's limit it to pre-2000s pre-2000s yeah it's pretty good like it's in the twisty scenario it trades blows with the xjr it beats things like the lancia lc2 which is the prize car 787b I'm, I'm comparing comparing this against prize cars because a lot of the top end cars within this niche are prize cars uh because if you took those away it would just be up against like the 962 and then you drop to a 94 R390, which obviously is going to beat, right? The moment you bring in the 99 905B, 905B is going to be better. Okay, fair enough. It's higher RQ. It's going to be better. In a drag sense, again, um, 905 Spider doesn't win much. Loses to the XGR9. Uh, loses to the LC2. And it also even loses to the Porsche 962C, uh, which is, you know, cheaper in RQ. But overall... I would say it's okay, you know, it's 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 more than okay. It's, it's it's good. It's it's the joint best EGT asphalt performer, and that's saying something. That being said, though, it's not gonna be blossom choice in my opinion. It's a great pre two thousand super twisty car, right? Like I would say the main reason why I'm giving it a high score is because you know this is a car that you can unpack 
And within its niche of pre-2000 super twisty, you know, like like a like a slalom or a twisty road or anything like that, it is capable of beating, you know, prize cars like the LC2 and the 787B. That's cool. That being said, though, in a general sense, the, the fact that I'm holding it back from Blossom Choice is because it fails to beat, you know, what are the top cars of previous updates, uh, namely the Radical, right? Namely the Radical and, of course, the 911 GT2 RS Club Sport 25. But... There it is, guys. Nine cars, the final part of overrated or overpowered. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this series as always. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. Um, I'm not going to do a part four. I don't think I can find nine more cars that are impressive in this update. I, I'm just, I'm not even trying to roast the update. I'm being 100% honest with you. I think I've already gone through almost every single car that has, you know, some potential. I might have missed one or two, but definitely not nine. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. And on to the next update before we see the series again. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and loving the series. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to stay safe, wash your hands, and blossom out. Peace. Bro, this song just makes me so happy. <laughs> me too. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jet box back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jet box back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Sit back, relax in my Bonneville Pontiac. Hold tight all night, cruise to Jacksonville Atlantic. Blah.